Well, good morning to Rocker Roseville. It is good to see you all today. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, diving into this message with you because of what I believe will happen on the other side of it. Uh, if it's anything close to what happened to me in hearing it, uh, it'll be a, a blessing to you. I'm grateful to, uh, to Pastor Sean for inviting me to participate in this series, Honey in a Rock. Uh, and before I, I get into that, I do want to say, uh, since we last saw each other, there's been some, some additions to your leadership. And so I want to congratulate Mike and Josephine as elders and, uh, and to, amen, amen. And to, to the new bishop over here, Bishop <laughs> co-lead pastor Aaron Dolce. God bless you, man. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's awesome. Um, I, when we think about this, this topic of, of honey in a rock and just the, the prophetic um, message that has been consistent from God to the Rock of Roseville about this particular message. Well, all these different bees. Um, one, I just pray y'all get a handle on that, but two, <laughs> so, so God won't have to keep saying the same thing over and over. <laughs> no, I, I, this, is, this is a very um, important season for the Rock, and this is a very important series. And so um, I want to share with you from this, this title. We're going to look at the same passage from Psalm 81 that Sean was sharing last week. But one of the things that I, um, I, I, I've noticed in relationships with people, specifically with God, is how important communication is. How important communication is. And so many times communication breaks down and can be frustrating when you're trying to share a thought or idea with someone and just to realize that they were not listening to you. Have you ever asked, are you listening to me? Or why aren't you listening to me? Get off your phone, I'm talking. You know, whatever it is. It can be really frustrating when people are not listening to you because it feels devaluing, it can feel disrespectful, it can feel that they are minimizing the significance and importance of not just what you have to say, but you. Like, you can take it personal. And so, uh, uh, last month, my wife and I celebrated 10 years of her putting up with me. And thank you, thank you. And I can, I can assure you, it's been a 10-year lesson on how to listen. How to listen. I've gotten better at listening. You know, like, like for real, listening, not just like looking. Yeah. Right? Not just the, oh yeah, yeah, baby, yeah, uh, yeah. Not just the nodding, but actual listening. And I'm gonna tell you right now, if you're, if you're new, uh, newly married, like that's a marriage hack if you just learn how to listen. But not just in marriages. So whether you're single or married or not, listening is important to all relationships, especially our relationship with God. You know, if, if I'm driving with my wife and she has some insight on some directions, but I feel this moment of sovereignty, <clears throat> like I for whatever lame, illogical reason, no better. And we end up taking a wrong turn. You know, to me, it's not necessarily the wrong turn, it's just, uh, it's just a longer enjoyment of the adventure to our destination. Everything I do is intentional. You gotta understand, it's all intentional. It might look like I'm lost, not lost. I'm enjoying. So, in those situations, if I'm not listening to someone who might know better than me, it could delay their journey a few extra minutes. But if in our relationship with God, 
we're not listening to what he is saying. You can ask the Israelites. It could delay the journey for decades. There is a higher cost in not listening to God than there is in just not listening to a family member, a spouse, even a child or a friend. And sometimes if you have your spiritual senses really tuned, you'll hear God speaking through some of those people in your, in your home. Um, I remember when we were, uh, well, I don't know why people say we were pregnant because only one person was pregnant. Um, <clears throat> I remember when my wife was pregnant, uh, the third time, uh, we, the, the doctors had said that we we're expecting her, the birth to be around the end of April. So we're planning for the end of April. And we had, even though we did both home visits and doctors, we mainly were going to use our, our midwife and so who lives about an hour away. And so, um, and so we had, you know, planned this whole plan, our birthing plan. Janine's mom, who lives about five hours away, was going to come and make sure that the kids are over, or taken care of so that uh, uh, we would have some privacy and things like that. So we had this plan. Uh, this estimated date near the end of April. Well, around the beginning of April, uh, around, I think April 4th, I'm changing my now five-year-old, but then two-year-old. I'm changing my two-year-old's diaper, and, uh, which is always an experience. But I'm, <laughs> um, as I'm changing her, her diaper, or, or May, the, May the 4th, May the... Th I mean, April the 4th, April the 3rd. She says, baby, come out. Baby, come out. Now, I don't know about your two-year-olds. That's not something I expect to come out of the mouth of my two-year-old. But even though it was a two-year-old saying the message in my spirit, I heard the Lord say, it ain't the end of April. So I told Janine, I said, hey, babe, it ain't, ain't we." This is baby come out. <laughs> baby coming, this baby coming out. Like S Sydney just said, baby's coming out. We, so I felt an urgency, a quickening in my spirit. We need to prepare a little, a little earlier. So instead of the end of April, it was April 7th. Right? You will be able to enjoy your life and life with God when you learn how to listen. So I want to talk about that too. If you listen to me, if you listen to me, and listening in all kinds of ways, whether it's through a two-year-old, whether it's through a dream, whether it's through the godly counsel of another believer in your life, God can even speak, I don't know, through a donkey perhaps. It's not necessarily how, but your spirit has to be in tune to pick up the radar of whatever he's saying and go, that's him, that's him, that's him. And then in addition to recognizing that he said it, you have to obey what he's saying. Uh, like Sean was saying today, the one who hears my vo voice and, and obeys them has built their house on a rock. Like That's how we can tell. You built your house on a rock. When you are listening, if you listen to me, well, let's let's read this this passage, and uh, I'm going to uh, start at verse eight and go to verse sixteen. So, just looking at, at at eight verses here, but I want you to notice you're going to see where this title for today came from. Okay, let's dive in verse eight. Listen to me now. So far, have you recognized anything? Recognize, right? This, I, wouldn't, I didn't take a whole lot of creative time to think about the title today. I don't know about you, but it, it leapt off the page to me. So God began in, in Psalm 81 talking about what he had been doing for them. And he says in verse 8, listen to me, O my people, while I give you stern warnings. O Israel, if you would only listen to me. Said it twice in one verse. 
And this is what he says. You must never have a foreign God. You must not bow down before a false God. For it was I, the Lord your God, who rescued you from the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide and I will fill it with good things. So this is his intentions here. Right. So he's kind of laying the framework for if you listen to me, I have some things intended for you. If you listen to me, open your mouth that I will fill it with good things. Verse 11. But no. My people wouldn't listen. Israel did not want me around. So I let them follow their own stubborn desires, living according to their own ideas. Oh, that my people would listen to me. Oh, that Israel would follow me walking in my paths. So now he, he, he goes on to say what would happen if they did. He goes on to say these are his intentions. These are his desires. If they would just listen to me, verse 14, how quickly... I would then subdue their enemies. How soon my hands would be open upon their foes, would be upon their foes. Verse 15, those who hate the Lord would cringe before him. They would be doomed forever, but I would feed you with the finest wheat. I would satisfy you with wild honey from the rock. You see the condition there? If you, if you listen. This is my plan, if you listen. This is my intentions towards you, but you gotta listen. And the reason why is, is there's, there's two ways. I'm, I'm gonna say this, the same phrase, I'm gonna say it differently, emphasizing the different words of the phrase. If you listen to me, listen. And if you listen to me, not everything else. Yeah. Clearly he was talking about earlier, don't bow to any false gods. Listen to me. So there's two ways we could talk about this. Emphasis on listening, like listen. And then to me. Why? Because of my desires towards you, because of my intentions towards you. There are things I want for you that you will not get if you don't listen to me, which means that the only way you walk into them, the only way that you discover them, the only way that you release them is by walking in alignment with what I'm telling you. If you listen to me, I will give you the best of the wheat and honey from a rock. If you listen to me. Now that means, let me say something. I don't always step into this element, but I will today. For the Rock of Roseville, I don't care what other churches across this nation are doing. I don't care what is trending in the church space in America or what's trending in America. You only pay attention to what is trending from heaven. I don't care what other churches are focusing on. You pray and seek the face of God and listen to what God is telling the rock of Roseville. Listen, things are going to get much more crazier. Things are going to get much more dark. And the way that the people of God will not just survive but thrive in the midst of it is if you listen to me. Beware of the distractions. Beware of all the false uh, uh, leadership, the false teachings, uh, the false directions where everyone's saying this is from God and it's not from God. Beware of all that. If you listen to me, then you'll be all right. The finest of wheat and honey from a rock. Now let's, let's break this down a little bit because this this is kind of a strange picture. I like the image they have, the, the graphic of the honey and the rock there, right? But it, it's, it's, this, is, this is a strange idea. This is a strange mental, mental picture. Why is this so significant to the people of God? Well, uh, one of the things that's interesting about this is I want us to contrast honey and, 
and the rock, as we just examine this picture. Like, there, there, are, there are some, some absolute opposites here. First, you have a liquid. Thank you, that was awesome. First, you have a liquid coming out of a solid. Then you have something sweet coming from something bitter. You have something soft coming out of something that is hard. You have something edible coming out of something that's not edible. You have something that is made from something living, bees, coming from something that is not living. You have something that is produced through a process, labor-intensive process, coming from something that is not the same, that doesn't have the same origin. You have something that is an element that is desirable. There's emotion attached to honey. It's delightful. It's pleasurable. Coming from something that has less than that kind of quality. Uh, one of the reasons why I want us to look at this is because the, the idea of honey coming from a rock is not just an unlikely possibility. It is an impossibility. It is impossible. No one in their right mind is hiking, sees a rock, and goes, you know what? Let's give it a few moments. <laughs> I've got a feeling. It, it's not... It is completely separate. The properties are separate. These things aren't together. And the reason why that is so important is because when you look at the idea of honey in a rock and then God saying, I'm going to bring you honey out of a rock, it means that because these two elements are completely separate, completely opposite, when that happens, it has to point to someone else doing it. It would never occur in nature. It is not natural. Honey from a rock points to the fact that the rock is not the source of the honey. Something else outside of the rock and the honey has used the rock to create honey in a way that you know the rock didn't create the honey. So the very dynamic of honey in a rock or coming out of a rock points to someone supernatural. Now this is so important because oftentimes when we look at the, the breakthroughs that God has given us, the miracles that he has given us and the things that he has done, the blessings, we can typically overlook a very important aspect of those breakthroughs and miracles and blessings. Uh, one of the things that I want you to take away from today's message is this. In everything that God does, his purpose is to reveal himself and his nature for you to get to know him. That's his most important priority for your life, for you to get to know him. Is he interested in blessing your finances? Sure, but that's not the top priority. Is he interested in, in, in uh, reconciling relationships in your, in your home and in your, uh, in your social life? Of course he is, but that's not his top priority. When he does those things, it is important for you and me to pay attention to not just what he did, how he did it, when he did it, where he did it. Because here's what ends up happening. We can start to see God as just a blessing machine. People can view God as if he is some cosmic butler that when you have a particular need, you go to him and he just, he gives you what you, what you want. 
And that's not him. He is a father who has a relationship with his children that he created through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. I mean, think about the cross and what that really means. Why was that so necessary? Because that was the only thing possible for you and me to have our sins completely forgiven so that we could be children of God. Like he literally did this whole gospel thing, sent Jesus so that we could be united with him and not just united with him, but to know him, to know him. Knowing him, you knowing him is God's number one priority for your life. You knowing him. So then, when he does things in your life, there's a reason why he does it differently for you than he would for me. Can God bless your finances? Yeah, when he blesses your finances, it's different than how he blessed my finances. When God touches your body, it's different from how he touches my body. When he worked out a situation in your family, it's different than how he worked out a situation in my family, but he worked out a situation in my family. Why did he do it that way? Why did he do it then? Why did he do it th there? We want to be able to, to start asking some questions. Here's why. Because when we are receiving from God without reflecting on God, it hinders us from knowing God. When we are receiving from God, God, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Without reflecting, huh? Why did he do it that way? What was he trying to show me? That's the question you got to ask. What was he trying to show me by how he did what he did? Where he did what he did? The person he used. What was he trying to show me by speaking through my two-year-old? He could have gave me a dream. I mean, I'm the adult and anointed one. <laughs> right? He, he could have. Right? I'm saying, say, five, feel the Holy Ghost. I got all that. <laughs> Why didn't he just tell me? We're the ones making plans. But he tells my, my two-year-old, who probably still didn't know at the moment that it was the creator of the universe speaking. Why, why, why would he do that? Well, one reason is to remind me, always keep your spiritual senses up. Always keep it. And then what did he say? He, he could have not told us. We could have just been bopping around. We could have been at Target. And then bam, like, oh, God, why didn't you say something? I just thought it'd be more interesting to watch you here at Target. <laughs> like, he's, right, why, why did he give us a heads up? Why did he tell, right? What is he saying? What does it mean to, to me for him to have warned me, for him to have spoken, for him to have done it through my two-year-old? And man, there's so many, there's so many different things. Um, let me, uh, we'll see if, if we have time, okay. Which we probably won't, but um, <laughs> the pass, passing fly, just let it go, let it go. <laughs> so when you think about the miracles that God has done in your own life, the breakthroughs, the answered prayer, just think about them. What was he trying to show you? What was he trying to say to you? What was he revealing to you about himself. If we are receiving from God without reflecting on God, it will hinder us from knowing him. And it will just keep us using him. He'll still bless you because he's good. People take advantage of God all the time. But he's determined not to be changed by it. Because he's perfect. His love is perfect. His compassion is perfect. His mercy is, is perfect. And so if people want to just use God for, for blessings, God will still be a blessing to people because he loves them, whether they love him back or not. He loves them, whether they accept him or not, whether they reject him or not, he loves them. Now, there's a difference in being in Christ and, and having a relationship with, with him as, as, as father, but he, he has been a blessing to people all across the world who don't even know him, don't even acknowledge him because he's good. But when it comes to those in relationship, he's like, listen, there are some things I want to do for you. Some things I want you to see and experience. But you'll get there if you listen to me. If you listen to me. So when he talks about this honey coming from a rock, it's like, why? Why would you do it that way? It absolutely points to me. There's no other explanation. You, you, can't, you can't take credit for that. 
You can't be like, yeah, I, I, I was working on that for quite a while. <laughs> right? They taught me this in school. I went to a workshop, and they had a Honey From Rock workshop. <laughs> you can't take credit for it. So this honey in a rock reveals the nature of God when he does things the way that he does them. So always, when he answers your prayer, take some time. Don't just grab the blessing and run. Take some time to sit and go, huh, why did you do it that way? What do you want me to learn, right? This is why, when people don't do this, this is why people can get blessed and blessed and blessed and blessed and still don't know God. You ever seen that? I mean, you, you probably encounter some people, their lives are raggedy, but then you, when you talk to them, like, do you know God? Oh, yeah, God's been good to me. What? How, how can you have this whole archive of God being good to you and you're still not living for him? You still don't, because they can just take it and run. But when you learn about God through this thing, that matures you, that fuels your, your faith. Think about how the story of David and Goliath would have been different. When David is facing Goliath, the, the rationale he gives is the same God who delivered me from the lion and the bear will also deliver me from Goliath. He wasn't like, Goliath, oh man, I was born for this. Right? I'm 2-0. Oh. <laughs> right, I'm 2-0. Oh. I got this. Like, Goliath don't even know what's about to happen. Huh? Give, give, me my, give me my sling. Right? He, he didn't do that. He was like, God. The God who did the bear, the God who did the lion is the same God who, right? So knowing what God is doing, and it fuels your faith because now you know him. And your knowledge of him diminishes any anxiety about the giant. Matter of fact, you don't even see a giant. David didn't see a giant. He goes, man, he didn't say, man, that dude is big. He goes, this uncircumcised Philistine, this dude who is out of covenant with God, he picked the wrong day to talk noise, not today, right? He just, <laughs> David... The only giant David saw was God. That's what happens when you take time to reflect on God when you receive from God. Right? David was killing the bear. He killed it. Man, he sat down. Whew. Man, I know I didn't do that. Like, what? Man, God's got my back for real. This bear could have took me out. I mean, can you imagine him sitting there with a big bear right? Like, just thinking. You gotta, you gotta think after that. <laughs> right? When he killed the lion, the Bible says his hands are around the lion's neck. You know how close that is? <laughs> Do you know how close that is? Do you know how close the lion's teeth are to your face? You don't just kill a lion and go, psh, psh, I'm a bad boy. I'm a bad boy. No. You sit down and you go, hold up, wait, because uh, I was almost swallowed just now. <laughs> I was almost swallowed just now. Man, he almost ate me like a bag of goldfish, just up in here. <laughs> See Dave wiping tears. Lion carcass right there. Like, man, there's no way. There's no way. He's reflecting on the on who God is by what he just received and he helps him know him and it's the knowledge of God that Goliath was up against and that's why Goliath didn't stand a chance but that's a sermon for a whole nother day <laughs> and so this is why it's important to reflect and so as I was looking at this whole honey thing I mean the honey in a rock is, is unique because Honey represents something unique to people then that it didn't necessarily represent to us today. Like honey today, I put honey in my tea, I, you know, if my, if my throat's sore, I put honey, you know. But they, it, it meant something different to ancient Israel. Um, for them, obviously, there was some nutritional value of the honey. Uh, sometimes they would use it for some medicinal purposes and obviously as a sweetener and things like that. But there was also some symbolism for them. That honey represented something joyful and delightful. Uh, one, one verse says that, talking about the word of God, your, your word is like honey to my lips. Right? I enjoy reading it and learning it and speaking it. It brings me joy and pleasure. It's delightful. There's a, the, the metaphorical uh, meaning of, of honey. But honey also represented 
bountifulness and abundance and fruitfulness. And so that's why, uh, for example, when God was telling uh, the Israelites as they're heading towards the promised land, he says, I'm going to take you to a land flowing with milk and honey. Now, we know that milk comes from cows. Maybe even they want to use goats. But honey comes from, you know, the work of bees. What God was not enticing the Israelites saying, man, if y'all come through that desert, psh, I got this land full of cows and bees. You are going to love it. You're going to love it. it. Cows everywhere, right? <laughs> All over the place. You are going to love it. The cow, I got brown cows, black and white cows. I got Chick-fil-A cows. I got all the... <laughs> I got, he, that wasn't it. And so, so what's appealing about milk and honey? The honey represented that the land was going to be fertile, that there's going to be an abundance for them. So when God says, I would give you honey from a rock, that means I'm going to give you some abundance out of places where it wouldn't normally come. There's abundance, there's fruitfulness, which means you can't just look around you and think that I'm just going to use what's there, right? And, and the New Testament talks about God promised to, to bless us according to his riches in glory. He didn't say, I'm going to bless you according to what I find available. I'm going to bless you according to my riches in glory. I can use some, that's why you can't walk by sight. You got to walk by faith because he can, he can pull some things out of some other things that you wouldn't think those things would come out of. So in a, in a land of dryness, he can bring out water. He, he pulled out water from a rock before. Like, he did that. Right? It doesn't make sense. It's not, it's not about a matter of physics. It's just a matter of faith. And so as we look at whatever situation we're in, whether it's, it's in the wilderness, whether it's your, what's going on in your life right now or whatever else, I, and you don't even see an opportunity for God to provide. You don't even see it. Because you might be looking for, for, for flowers and bees in order for there to be honey, in order for it to make sense to you. But he's like, no, I do honey from a rock. That's, well, that's what I do. Like a rock. Like you don't even see it coming. Let me, let me share with you a couple of things I want you to, to be thinking about. Number one, honey from a rock symbolizes... God's ability to provide, um, but it, it talks about his goodness, right? It, it's, honey is, is sweet, it's pleasant, it's, it's good. So the, the, the goodness of God, it's God's blessing and God's favor. It's, it's his goodness, honey itself, honey, his goodness. And then it talks about his, uh, it's unexpected. You would not expect honey from a rock. All right? So we think about this honey from a rock. Again, looking at what's the, what does it reveal about the nature of God? The nature of God. What is he trying to show us when he does that? He's showing us that he's good. It's honey from a rock. It's not salt from a rock. It's honey from a rock. And, and it's unexpected. You wouldn't think about these things coming from, you know, these, one thing coming from the other. And then it's miraculous, right? That God is miraculous. He must use supernatural power power to create this kind of the next thing is provision provision it's god's ability and and desire notice that ability and desire to create abundance even in challenging or impossible circumstances i was close to saying seemingly impossible circumstances but it's not seemingly impossible some stuff is impossible if God doesn't do it, it's not happening. It is impossible unless God acts, unless God moves. And so he, the, the honey from a rock symbolizes that God is he, he's good, he's unexpected, he's miraculous, and he, provi he, he provides. So I, I, I want to use those words specifically so you can remember the word gump, like forest. <laughs> Boop. Gump. There it is. Gump. Stop. Sean, I hear you laughing all the way up here, bro. I hear you laughing. <laughs> I want you to remember, honey from a rock. What does it reveal about God? That he is good, unexpected, miraculous, and there's provision. I don't see enough of y'all writing this down. <laughs> Go on, write it down, take a picture. We'll pause, we'll wait. <laughs> Go on, pull out, you take a picture of everything else. <laughs> I'm trying to help you know God up in here. What you do? Take a picture of chicken fried steak, but you won't take a picture of it. You know how much time I spent trying to spell gump with these words? <laughs> that's, what he's, that's what he's showing. 
Let's go back to this. Let's look at this. Let's wrap this, the message up here. Verse 11. The thing I want you to see here is all this is possible if you listen to me. If not, it could be a missed opportunity. It speaks to potential, right? Verse 11. But no, my people wouldn't listen. Israel did not want me around, so I let them follow their own stubborn desires, living according to their own ideas. Oh, that my people would listen to me. Oh, that Israel would follow me, walking in my paths. How quickly I would then subdue their enemies. How soon my hands would be upon their foes. Those who hate the Lord would cringe before him. They would be doomed forever. But I would feed you with the finest wheat. I would satisfy you with wild honey from the rock. As believers, you and I are called to be led by his spirit. Listening to him is one of the things that we do. Right? Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. In Matthew 4, verse 4, when Satan is trying to tempt Jesus, Jesus said, nope, man shall not live by bread alone, but by the words that come out of the mouth of God, the spoken word. You and I, we, we, we have been in, in uh, a special software has been installed in us for us to be able to hear, recognize the voice of God, to recognize that he is speaking to us. And then our own faith that leads, lead, leads us to lean in to what he's doing. We, we have to be led by him. Our education, our, our life experience, and, and the people we know and our social network, that's not enough that's going to get us to where we will discover the honey in a rock, where it will come out. We must listen to what he's saying. We're called to live our whole lives by this. Paul put it this way in Romans 8, 14. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The actual Greek word there is mature children of God. It takes the maturity to learn how to be led by his spirit. So I'll say this and then we'll, we'll close and I want us to um, get ready to, to, to cue up the, the song we want to end with today as we transition to, to communion. Uh, here's a little formula for you. Our obedience plus God's faithfulness equals supernatural provision. That's it. Our obedience plus God's faithfulness equals supernatural provision. Every time. Every time. The honey and the rock is supernatural. Right? It's good, unexpected, miraculous. And it's provided for us. If we listen. I, uh, th th there was a time where I was... Um, Going from San Francisco, coming back to Roseville, I was visiting a client, and as I leave, uh, I'm away from San Francisco to Roseville, um, there was a couple of Chick-fil-A's in Fairfield and Vacaville. And so I normally go to the one in Fairfield because I can just pop off, off of 80, go through the line, get back on, and keep on going. So one particular day, I was coming, and I actually took the exit, and just a random thought, go to the one in Vacaville. Like, huh, okay. Now, in this season of my life, as I'm, I don't have like a, a, a nine to five, and so the way that God's providing is through contracts, through my business, and things like that. And so, um, we're, at this time, specifically looking, man, we need some more, we need some more contracts, God. Where are you wanting to, to gump me? <laughs> and so, Go to the Chick-fil-A in Vacaville. Now, there's, there's no rational reason to do that. I just know I heard it. And because I'd already took the exit to go to the one in Fairfield, this idea was not mine. Right? I recognized it as a foreign idea. It wasn't mine. And I don't think the devil's that interested. And so this had to be the, had to be the Lord. <laughs> so I go to the one in, in Chick-fil-A, I mean, in, in Vacaville. And they've got two lines. And I pull up right next to somebody who I used to do, um, our, the church I was at, we adopted several schools, and I pulled up right next to a person who was a principal of one of the high schools and is now the director of all the high schools, right? And we ended up talking, connecting, long story short, we hooked up on Zoom, and it led to a very nice contract. Now, a very nice contract. <laughs> I mean, just honey from a rock. And 
So the thing is, had I, had I been in that drive-thru and been behind her, I don't know her car, we would have gone through and I wouldn't have even known it was her. Had I been in front of her, wouldn't have known it was her. So many other things could have happened even at the drive-thru. It just so happens that I pulled up and I'm looking and she's right there. That little phrase, go to the one in Vacaville, led to a five-figure contract. I was praying, but ain't just praying. If you listen, honey is in the rock. There's his desire, his, his intention. What releases that is if you listen. God specialized in doing this. Not just honey and rock here, but I mentioned in the one situation with Moses. He brought water out of a rock as he is leading the people of Israel through the wilderness. He had quail fall out of the sky. Um, not because they were flying, got tired. Like he was providing <laughs> the quail just for them. A whole nation of people, just quail, boom. Right? And then manna, bread that he provided just out of nowhere. They'd wake up in the morning and, and psh, bam, there it was. Star bread, just right there on the ground. You know, and so it was just there. So there's a song I want to I want to share with you. The song is called Honey in a Rock. And it talks about there's honey in the rock. There's water in the stone. There is manna on the ground. No matter where I go. I don't need to worry now that I know. Everything I need, you've got. There's honey in the rock. So I want our ushers to come forward, and as, they, as this song plays, they're going to be passing out communion. And as the song ends, then we'll do communion together, and then we'll, we'll dismiss for today.